Okay, I have to push continue, so, okay. Perfect, all right, all right. Well, good morning, uh, Jenny. And good for morning. the purpose of whoever is viewing this testimony, I'm letting everyone know who I am and I'm Laura Schuler, and I'm on uh, behalf of the Jewish Historical Society having uh, this opportunity to speak to Jenny Bellsberg, which is an honor and a privilege on November the 2nd, 2021. And in my estimation, Jenny, and I, I hope you'll be okay with me sharing how I feel about you and I know I, I just know I'm not the only person who feels this way. You're very much loved and endeared member of our Jewish community. And not only just the Jewish community, but Calgary at large. And, and for many reasons, but one of the big reasons is because you live and you breathe the spirit of generosity philanthropy and service into everything you do from the minute you wake up to the minute you go to bed. And that's something I've come to know about you. And I am in huge awe of, and I appreciate that you have included the Jewish Historical Society as part of your life and legacy giving is, is a huge honor and uh, there aren't enough thank yous in the world that you deem the work that we do and what we stand for as meaningful. There's so many organizations in the Jewish community that you could uh, include in your giving that you have chosen the Jewish Historical Society to be among them is very humbling and and we the gratitude is immense so if i might ask why us why the jewish historical society first of all you flatter me very much i'm just an ordinary citizen who was born in calgary and i'm thrilled to be part of this community from my birth on my family my parents were happy to live in canada we're so grateful they came to canada from russia and lived a wonderful life here. And so far, so good. Um, Calgary is a wonderful city to live in and I'm proud to be here. And I have wanted to leave a legacy and I'm doing it in whichever way I can to the best of my ability. But the Historical Society is very dear to my heart to begin with because Jay Joffe was a good friend and my husband, Hi, and he worked together raising funds for the Jewish Historical Society. And, um, and um, uh, my whole family benefit from this organization because I, I send on a lot of things to them. Some of the clippings in newspapers, even to uh, a sister who passed away many years ago, but her children live in Vancouver. And one of her daughter, she had a boy and a girl, but the daughter, is very interested in all the historical facts. She keeps writing me things that she finds even today to remind me of what was in, in your, um, the Jewish Historical Society has a newsletter, all sorts of things. And she's still interested and she was never a citizen of Calgary. She lives in Vancouver, but your organization makes this happen. So across the country, maybe even in the United States or in the world, they know about the Jewish Historical Society in Calgary. And I think it's very, very important. And we have to remember our past where we're doomed to forget it, right? So we have to make a point of it. This is my way of doing it. I can no longer really be involved. Um, although I meet a lot with all your women in your organization and, and uh, Roberta, Kerr has come and looked through all my files and spent so many hours voluntarily to do this. What else can I say? I could go on and on, but I don't want this to be boring. 
Well, there's nothing you could ever say that's boring. You have uh, us always on the edge of your seat because you have a 2020 memory of, uh, of not only your, your life, but of the life of Calgary, the life in Calgary as you lived it, as you experienced it, as you saw it. Um, and uh, what you have to say and what you have to share uh, is so valuable and uh, just having an opportunity to get to know you and to hear your experiences is not only a pleasure for me, but uh, it's a gift that lives on and on. And uh, Thank you, um, not only for uh, including the Jewish Historical Society, uh, but for this testimony that uh, will go onto the website for others to see the value in preserving the past for the present, for the future, so that we all remember. I hope, yes. Um, you know, I was born here and, um, uh, grew up in the Mission District near the Tivoli Theater. And, um, and I went to Cliff Bungles. I went first to the Paris School for four years with Yiddish school and learned Yiddish. And I loved my teachers there. And then I was, I, after the four years were up, was up, I had to be attending the public school. It was a real shocker to go to the public school. And um, I won't go into some of the things that happened, but um, this was all part of my community. The neighbors' children went there, and and um, it it was a wonderful time to grow up. And um, my parents loved being there. We had some Jewish neighbors. We also had Catholic neighbors, um, and we played with the children on the street. Uh, and we just felt comfortable. It never was an issue. So um, growing up, my father was very involved with the parrot school. He used to drive the kids to school, me included. And in those days, you didn't wear seat belts and you didn't worry how many kids were in this. You packed as many as you could into the car, one on top of the other, and he drove them to school. But the community was smaller. The city was smaller and didn't have far to go. And, um, and uh, I loved the Barrett School and I loved my teacher, Mary Belkin, who taught English there. And, um, and it was very personal. The classes were small and it was a great way to start my education in an elementary school. And then I went to Cliff Bungalow, as I said, for grade five and six and, um, and moved on to Rideau for my junior high and then to Western Canada High School. Um, I had wanted to go to university, but my father said, to wash diapers, you don't need to go to university and get a degree. And that was the thinking of that time, you know, and, um, and he said, you have to go out and earn a living. And we were poor. So I got a job working for the um, uh, army, actually, at, at my first job. I had worked for the um, agricultural department during the summer, just so I had some money for spending money and, um, and then, uh, and, uh, but I did nothing except answer the phone and the boss would come in and there was a big hog scale in the, in the I remember that. And one time he did bring a pig in to weigh it in, in the uh, administration building, which was in the post office. And then anyway, when I did start working for the army, it was in the traders building, which is on 11th Avenue now, um, condos but um <clears throat> it was the headquarters for the army and um i was work assigned to work in the pay corps and um you know it's very army oriented with the major in his closed office in front of that lieutenant and me as the secretary behind him and um but it divided off with just short walls. And so everybody on the floor got to know each other. And it was wonderful, but it was very end of the war uh, when this all happened. 
However, it was exciting and um, uh, to be there and to be working there. And they had a canteen. And so you'd go down for coffee there and then you'd come back up and work in your office. So, and they would have a party once a month in the basement that you'd have to attend and all of those kinds of things. Um, I didn't always attend. Uh, I had excuses because I was afraid to get too involved with soldiers and my father would have had a fit. So my father drove me when it happened and pick, would pick me up at 10 o'clock just to make sure I didn't stay too late and get involved. Um, those were different times, very different times hey, of what we saw today. Will you be including uh, some of these experiences in Sandra's presentation for women involved in the war effort in November? Uh, I, I don't think so. No. No? No. Mm -mm. Might she give you a call then? And uh, because she will be speaking about women who were involved in the war effort, I don't think she knows that you work for the army. Well, I wasn't in uniform and, and uh, I knew others who were, but there weren't any other Jewish people on that floor anyway, so I didn't know them. But um, uh, I know of them. Uh, I was just a regular stenographer. And well, we, were, we were in dependence allowance, so we were giving money to those who were dependent on the soldiers. That was, and we had to assign the money and we had to get their agreement, all that sort of thing. Yeah. Well, this is one amazing example of how you uh, can still contribute to program because you're still involved in the war effort. So if, uh, if I have your permission, might I have Sandra give you a call, our president, just to uh, have a little discussion about that? Sure. I never thought it was important, but yes, of course. You mm -hmm. bet it's important. Uh, this is priceless, absolutely priceless. So this is just one more example of well, how you have served. Well, and then, you know, I worked with the immigration. Well, I went off to Vancouver and lived in Vancouver for a year, worked for Canard Lines, which was an agency and we were selling um, Passenger, passages to people four years hence because the troop ships had not been converted yet into luxury liners. And so many young people had left their parents in, in England or in Europe and wanted to go back there to see dying relatives, or, but they had to wait four years to get a passage. It was really sad. That was another thing that you know, really opened my eyes to what the war had done. When I got back, I got a job with the immigration department again. And um, that's when I met my husband, Hi. But um, in working for the immigration department, I was filling out papers for Jewish people when people were applying. And um, I recall filling out the papers for Sid Singeiser. Jack Singer and Bella Singer came in to apply to the immigration uh, through my boss and uh, Mr. McElharvey. And I was assigned to fill out the papers. And Sid and Brenya then became relatives of mine through my husband. I never even knew who they were then. So, you know, it's always such a small world. And, um, but Sid himself is, and, and Brenya both have become, been stayed friends and we're still in touch all the time. And I never oh. knew that I was ever going to know them when I built that up. So life is interesting. You never know where it's going to take you. Well, you've just given two priceless moments and highlights about why people's testimonies are absolutely gifts that live on and how everything is connected, how people are connected in beautiful ways that must be preserved. So on behalf of the Jewish Historical Society, once again, Jenny, for including us in your legacy giving, uh, 
we thank you uh, from all corners of our heart on behalf of the entire organization for your glorious testimony today, for your time, for your energy, and for being willing to uh, be featured on our website. Like I said, it's a gift that keeps on giving. Thank I you. thank you with, thank you with every part of me. And best wishes to you. And thank you for all that your whole organization is doing. All of you are volunteering your time, giving so much of yourself and what you're doing. And I hope it is meaningful to you because it is meaningful to many of us that receive all your mail and your newspapers and everything. Thank you. Absolutely. And I thank you too. And may you have a glorious day because you've certainly made mine. Very Great. glorious. What a way to what a way to start the day, Jenny. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Have a good one. Okay, you too, love. Thank you.